In this lab, we are trying to make sense of forest fires. Now, in order to do that, we have to get to the scientific principle at the crux of forest fires, and that is a chemical reaction, more specifically, a combustion reaction. Now, I'm gonna show you a scaled down analogy of a combustion reaction of a tree by burning this wood splint. Now, if I ignite this, what you'll notice is the burning or combustion of the splint. You can see the little ember there at the end. Now, it's important to recognize what's happening here. There is all this chemical potential energy stored in the chemical bonds that make up this piece of wood. Now, when this burns, the bonds between the carbon and hydrogen atoms and the bonds between the carbon and oxygen atoms break, and then they reform as carbon dioxide and water molecules, and that process results in the release of energy. We can study empirically how much energy is released by burning something using a technique called calorimetry. Now, I have a really high-tech calorimeter right here. This is a soda can calorimeter. And I measure the initial temperature of the water. And subsequently, I'm gonna reignite my wood splint here. I've got a little bit left to go. If I burn my fuel directly under the calorimeter, I can measure the energy released by that fuel source insofar it is transferred to the water in the can. So if I measure the initial temperature of the water and the final temperature, I can use some fancy math that I show you in the background section of this lab to calculate the energy density of a wood splint. Technically, when I burn something, I'm not destroying it. I'm only transforming the atoms from one substance into another. So when I burn a wood splint or a tree, I'm not destroying the carbon atoms or the oxygen or the hydrogen atoms. I'm just transforming them into another type of matter. When we burn a fuel, what happens? Well, the atoms that form those fuels break apart from each other, and when they do so, they can recombine with other atoms, and in that process, energy is released. In a forest fire, we feel that energy in the form of heat, or a really dramatic temperature increase. Now, let's look at a specific example. I'm gonna burn methane here. So I'm gonna turn on my gas give it a spark, and now I am burning methane. I'm reacting methane molecules with oxygen gas. So in this case, I'm taking methane molecules, which look like this. I have a carbon atom in the middle here that's represented by this black sphere bound to four hydrogen atoms represented by the white spheres. When methane burns, these atoms separate from the atoms they're connected to. In other words, the chemical bonds break. Those atoms can now go out and form new compounds. So for example, my methane molecule breaks apart and reacts with an oxygen molecule. This is an oxygen molecule here. There are two oxygen atoms. The, the bonds here can break, and now this can form something else that looks like this. So my oxygen atoms went out and formed H2O as part of this combustion reaction. I also form carbon dioxide, okay, as seen here. So Anytime you burn something, you are not technically destroying it. You are just transforming the matter that makes that thing up into something else. So, for example, at a forest fire, when trees burn and homes burn, unfortunately, the atoms aren't technically destroyed. Those building blocks atoms are not destroyed. They are just transformed into other matter. And that matter is often carbon dioxide, which goes out into the atmosphere and warms the temperature of the Earth, and water vapor.